Hello everyone, first of all, before beginning the video, thanks to each and every person who went to the site and bought med notes. I hope the order is going to reach you in time. We have dispatched almost all of them. Uh, there's going to be sale for the next seven days. So if you haven't yet checked out my site, please do so. So welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Anuj. I'm a second year medical student at GNC Nagpur. And today I've kind of transitioned back from anatomy to physiology because this is something which I never really understood very well. But now I do. So let me help you out too. So we're going to talk today about the coagulation cascade and the things that happen before the coagulation takes place. So this is a very important topic in physiology, in pathology and also pharmacology. So let's begin. So first of all, if you can see here, this is a blood vessel and I've taken out a cross section of it. So from here you can see erythrocytes there, uh, the black color ones are platelets and you can also see a few WBCs. So I have enlarged one platelet here. So before we begin the clotting cascade, let me tell you a little bit about them. So platelet, they are usually spherical bodies and they are actually, uh, can, they actually have granules. So these granules are various things. They're actually uh, different kinds of granules, but that doesn't matter. They have activated clotting factors. They have ADP, they have calcium. And one specific thing which I'd like to point out is that there are two surface receptors present on the membrane of the platelet. So there is GP1A and GP2B3A. So GP is basically glycoprotein. So we have GP1A and GP2B3A. Remain part, I'll come back to you later. So we can see here that if we have punctured a capillary, so first of all we can see that there is the tunica media which has smooth muscles. It has been damaged and hence the puncture can penetrate through the tunica interna into the blood vessel. So first of all we can see here that the endothelium cells have been damaged. So what happens, the first thing is that, this is a magnified view of this. So first thing what happens is that the endothelial cells, they have uh, a certain peptide known as endothelin. So they release endothelin directly into the media. So what happens is that the smooth muscle right here, it will undergo contraction. So that is the first step in the uh, actually uh, hemodynamics. So the first step is uh, contraction of the smooth muscles uh, due to endothelin. So that contraction itself first primarily stops the blood flow. You can also see here that there is something green coming out from the media of the blood vessel into the lumen of the blood vessel. So that green stuff is actually collagen. And if you can see clearly that there are blue blue dots here. So those are actually uh, something called as von Willeban factors present on the surface of collagen molecules and different fibers of the extracellular matrix which make them highly thrombogenic. So thrombogenic means uh, the ability to form a clot, to thrombose a thing. So we have here uh, collagen with von Willeban factors. So this is V, W, F and here we have the black colored platelets that we talked about. So first step is release of endothelin from the damaged endothelium and hence uh, endothelium mediated contraction of the media that stops the edematous fluid to leak out. Okay, so what will happen next is that since we have here von Willeban factors and GP1A here. So if you remember, I talked about GP1A, it is a glycoprotein found on the surface of platelets. So GP1A will actually bind very tightly with this von Willeban factor. So the von Willeban factor present in the extracellular matrix okay which is highly thrombogenic will bind with gp1a so that they will together stick like a magnet and that uh, entire complex will actually cause adherence of many of the platelets so here you can see that this green one is actually the collagen molecule with the blue blue dots as von willeban factors attached to it you can see this receptor drawn here in black so i have gp1a attaching to the von willeban factor right here so this actually forms a physical arrangement of the platelets over the extracellular matrix and as you can see uh, the gap which was formed due to the puncture of this vessel has been kind of sealed off. So this is, this is all due to physical interactions. There is no chemical lysis of anything yet. So this thing it is called as the primary plug, primary platelet plug. So here you, you can also see that the smooth muscle have con constricted and that has narrowed the vessel lumen but here the, there is only physical contact 
with the collagen and the GP1A molecule which actually causes the uh, formation of the primary plug okay now you can also see here that there is something drawn in red so that red thing here that's not the muscle that's actually a plasma protein it's called fibrinogen so fibrinogen is a plasma protein which is produced by the liver as most of the plasma proteins are including the, including the clotting factors which we uh, which we will be discussing right now so this is fibrinogen so if you can see here that the fibrinogen has not yet been cleaved to fibrin which is an active product uh, formed by action of thrombin on fibrinogen so basically we have intact fibrinogen here and intact fibrinogen is getting bound to the platelets by another set of receptors because they are, the platelets have already engaged one of the receptors GP1A into the von Willebrand factor so the other receptor we have which is kind of like this inverted resistance sign so GP2B3A so GP2B3A will associate with the uncleaved fibrin fibrinogen so what will happen is that the fibrinogen circulating in the blood will get adherent to the part where the primary plug is getting formed so repeating first there was endothelin mediated vasoconstriction then quickly the extracellular matrix especially the collagen which has a lot of von Willebrand factors will adhere with the GP1A of the platelets the surface of the platelets and also the GP2B3 of the platelets will adhere with the uncleaved fibrinogen so all of this mechanism including the constriction will form a primary plug which is formed basically by the physical action and there is no uh, chemical mediators here so all of this is primary plug now hold that thought in your mind and let me explain to you something else so here we were talking about a platelet we can see here that the platelet has granules and I talked that the granules have different things so they have clotting factors CF, ADP and they have calcium, uh, calcium ions so what happens now is that I'm going to zoom a part of the pl platelet membrane the lipid bilayer of the platelet and show you here so this is the lipid bilayer of the platelet what you can see here is that there is the outer membrane and there is one inner membrane as always but you can see here that the inner membrane has actually red red lines so what those red lines are are actually a, a thing called as phosphatidyl serine so phosphatidyl serine is a kind of phospholipid so it is present actually in the inner membrane of the uh, platelet and it is negatively charged because it has phosphate group what happens is that whenever there is a formation of primary plug or whenever there is disturbances in the platelet this phosphatidyl serine jumps out and goes to the outer membrane so since this is negatively charged and it is going to the outer membrane what it will do is that there is uh, calcium in the serum so it will attract all that calcium and form a lipid calcium complex so again phosphatidyl serine which was present on the inner leaflet of the platelet has jumped outside to the outer membrane and hence the calcium which is present in the blood and also the platelet granules which will be released uh, will get adherent to this phosphatidyl serine so what this forms is that this forms a very nice uh, positive negative charge complex to which various clotting factors can bind to and show their activity so again we have here calcium and phosphatidyl serine the next thing we can see here is that there is this red color thing which we also saw here so this is nothing but fibrinogen so we have fibrinogen here which is getting adherent to the platelet by the GP2B3A again this is just this thing zoomed here so we have GP2B3A which is getting adherent to your fibrinogen, uncleaved fibrinogen and then we have calcium phosphatidyl serine complexes which have different activated clotting factors which are getting bound to this I know this may sound a bit confusing but stay with me now what happens is that as soon as this primary platelet plug is formed the granules which the platelet had will be lost to the uh, blood that means there will be degranulation of platelets so degranulation of platelets will actually release out important clotting factors such as all of these factors which are also present in platelets and also in the blood there is important factor th uh, 13 present which is actually the fibrin stabilizing factor which is formed by the platelet itself actually in the megakaryocyte stage so that will be released along with calcium, ADP and one important modulator of uh, coagulation that is thromboxane A2 so thromboxane A2 is actually an arachidonic acid derivative which is formed uh, by different pathways so here the granules will release clotting factors ADP, calcium, thromboxane A2 all of these things first of all they will act on the platelet itself and cause the uh, 
shape of the platelet to deform. So the normal round platelet, if you can see here, will get deformed to spiky kind of structure. So first thing, there will be granule release after this, there will be jumping of phosphatidylserine, uh, the adherence of the calcium to the phosphatidylserine uh, and of the fibrinogen with the GP2B3A. And then finally, we will have there is the change in the shape of the platelets along with a lot of active factors and a lot of inactive factors in the blood which will uh, further undergo the coagulation to form the secondary clot. So we were here at the primary plug, then all of this happened. Now I'm going to explain how this long fibrinogen thing is going to be broken into small small segments of fibrin. So for this we need an enzyme which will cleave this. Okay, so we have to form fibrin from fibrinogen. For that we need something called as a coagulation cascade. So bear with me here. Uh, there are two ways by which you can start up the coagulation cascade which will ultimately lead to uh, formation of the de definitive, uh, definitive plug or secondary plug. So what we can do here is that if there is some, some form of tissue injury such as we saw here that there was tissue injury. So if there is any form of tissue injury it will release tissue factor thromboplastin. So if tissue factor is present in blood the uh, clotting factor associated known as factor number 7 will get activated and it will form 7A. Hold that thought in your mind. If there is any form of activation of platelets, what will happen is that 12 will become 12A, 11 will become 11A. Now 11 can become 11A by two methods that is via cleavage by the 12A or by direct cleavage by the thrombin. 2A is actually thrombin. If you can see here, 2A is thrombin. Now this 9, uh, 11A will actually uh, cleave the nascent 9 into 9A which will help the 8 to become 8A. Also in the presence of thrombin they can do that. Now we have this extrinsic pathway which started because some external material from the extracellular matrix came into the blood. So we have extrinsic pathway and then, then we have intrinsic pathway started by the platelets itself. So we can grossly say that if you uh, injure the blood this, uh, this pathway will come into play. If you injure the tissues this pathway will come into play. So that was extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. What happens is that all of these factors, this 9, 8, 7, all of these converge and turn the 10 factor, factor number 10 into 10A. So this convergence of the extrinsic and intr uh, intrinsic pathway to one thing that will lead to the common pathway. So we have the common pathway, 10 will become 10A in the presence of calcium again, which was released from the platelets and also presented the serum. So we have 10A here, which will again finally form thrombin. Now thrombin will activate other factors as well. So this is a positive cycle that is more thrombin you get, the more thrombin you will get. So this is a positive cycle. Now this thrombin which is formed, now this thrombin which is formed, it will cleave the fibrinogen to fibrin. That was the original goal. We had to cleave this long bundle of fibrinogen into short short fibrin threads. So we have now, we have now a complex of thrombin which is an enzyme which will cleave the fibrinogen to small small sets of fibrin. Now this fibrin will get interlinked like a web to, uh, with the help of fibrin stabilizing factor factor number 13. So there will be extensive cross linking. Now all of this is happening simultaneously and so what happens is that at the site there is entrapment of formed blood cells, the red blood cells, the platelets, the WBCs. What the WBCs will do is that they have selectin molecules, integrin molecules. So using all of those molecules, they will get adherent to the secondary clot and then uh, they will undergo inflammation. So they will bring about inflammation associated with the clotting process. So in short, let's revise quickly. What will happen is that here we have a normal blood vessel. If you punch it, there will be first vasoconstriction mediated by endothelin. Then there will be formation of primary plug, which is mediated by GP1A and GP2B3A which will bound to the von Willebrand factor. The deficiency of von Willebrand factor will lead to a bleeding disorder. Similarly, the deficiency of its receptor, the GP1A, will again lead to a bleeding disorder. Now, uh, coming to the platelet surface, we have, first of all, after, after this has been done, the primary plug, there will be degranulation of the platelet, so all its granules will be lost. The granules contain clotting factors ADP, uh, calcium and thromboxane A2. What will happen is that the phosphatidylserine present in the inner leaflet of the platelet will jump to the outside. It will bind the positive calcium. 
Now this will set the stage for the further dance of the clotting factors we have here. The clotting factor, the main goal is to convert the fibrinogen, which is a long thread, into small small fibrin so that they can better cross link. So to that, to do that, we have to first make thrombin, which is actually the scissors required to cut the fibrinogen. Now, how to make the thrombin? We have two pathways. We have the extrinsic pathway and the intrinsic pathway. Both of these will undergo and form a positive cycle which will actually form the thrombin and thrombin is the main scissor that will cut the long threads of fibrinogen to form fibrin. Now fibrin will undergo cross-linking due to the uh, factor number 13 that is fibrin stabilizing factor and this cross-link will create a very strong meshwork simultaneously with all of these processes which will entrap all the formed elements of the blood such as RBCs, platelets and uh, neutrophils etc. And the WBCs which are attracted uh, here will actually cause inflammation and edema swelling. So that was all about coagulation. I hope this video helps you out. And please, if you haven't checked out the website, go up there. I have one important announcement that is, uh, I'm planning on starting a blog on this website. So if you're interested, please check that out. The first blog will be out on Wednesday. So yeah, thank you so much. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up. It means more than anything else. And if you like the channel, please subscribe and hope you have a good day. Thank you.